So let's let me show you how a, a machine endowed with these capabilities can solve the repetition problem. And here's the high level idea. Since I can move, let me move right and, 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 and see what the first bit here is. Okay. I know the first bit here. Okay. Let me remember it by transitioning to a state for zero. And then let me continue moving right and see if it matches. Okay. Then let me come back. Okay. And come back to the second bit because I can move. Okay. Come back to the second bit, move right and see if it matches. Come back to the third bit, move right and see if it matches. Okay. Come back. I see there are no more bits. I go forward, see there are no more bits. Boom. I have a repetition string. It's in my language. I say yes. Okay. So the power of mobility. Okay. And the power of this random access memory. Now, let's formalize that at least a little bit in, into, into something that might look like pseudocode or an algorithm. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll write down more, slightly more detailed steps and, and show you in slightly more detail how the machine solves it. And then we will actually build the Turing machine that solves this problem. Okay, and when we have done that, you will have seen your first Turing machine. Okay, and okay. Um, those are the inner workings of computers. And in the homework, you might have to build your own Turing machine all by yourself. Okay. And then th after that point, that might be the last time you see a Turing machine again. Okay. Kind of like, you know, nowadays we don't know about the inner workings of the computer. Well, the Turing machine is what's in there. Okay. But we don't, you know, deal with it on a day to day basis. But at least you will know what it is. What's the theoretical model? Okay. What's going on inside your CPU okay. with access to RAM? All right. So let me spell out that algorithm that I just described at a high level. Okay, so algorithm slash pseudocode to solve what? To solve this language. Okay, so let me put that in quotes. We don't really know what that means. I'm just going to describe the steps that this machine with this capability can use in order to solve this language. Okay, so the first step. Okay. The first thing that the machine might do is move right and, and, and verify the format. Check input format. So you move right until you come to a blank, checking that there's only one pound. So in this case, that there's only one pound. Only one punctuation pound. Okay. After you have checked that, you will have come all the way to the right. Verify there's only one pound. You need to now go back to the, uh, go back to base, go back to the beacon star. So go back to star. Okay. You can think of this as, let's check the input. Okay. Someone tells you, I'm giving you a file with only numbers, find the maximum. Well, it's a good idea to check that the file has only numbers. Okay. So we've checked the input, we've come back to the start, and we're ready to process the string. So let's start processing the string. Okay. So move right. Remember what I said, we're going we're gonna to check the first bit with the first bit, second bit with the second bit, third bit with the third bit. So how do we find the first bit? We move right. Move right okay, to the first bit. Now I'll be specific. This is a bit, and the, uh, uh, we are, we're, we're going to envision marking memory locations in order to indicate that we've we've already checked that bit. Okay, so move right to the first bit that is unchecked. To the first unchecked bit. Okay, so when we move right. To the first unchecked bit, we will actually come to this bit. Okay, so let me show you now what's going on. Okay, in sort of some detail. So let's draw the, the tape with our uh, Turing machine uh, DFA on it. So we've got the star. I'll put that in red. Usually I won't put it in red, but just for, for today, let me put it in red. So I've got my input zero zero one pound zero zero one, and then there's the you know the empty symbol, the blank symbol. Okay, so I check the input, I've come back. Now I move right to the first unchecked bit. So I, I move right to the first unchecked bit. So here I am. Okay, and if you if now that I've gotten to this unchecked bit, so what do I do? Remember it. Remember the bit. How does a DFA remember a bit? Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds, think about it. So it doesn't, it, there's no such thing as remember the bit. What, what that really means is transition to a state that corresponds to the bit. So if the bit is zero, as in this case, transition to a zero state. And if the bit were one, then you would transition to a one state. Okay. So remember the bit and then mark it or check it and uh, check it. So we'll mark it, we'll check it. Okay. 
Now, it's possible that when you're moving right to the first unchecked bit, there are no unchecked bits. You get to pound or something else might happen. You might you get to pound. For example, if, if W is empty, so then there are no unchecked bits. You get to pound right from the very beginning. You get to pound. In which case, we'll decide what to do later. And because I know the algorithm, I'm going to say, in which case, go to step five. Okay, so let's, re let's summarize what we have so far. We've gone right, we've come to an unmarked bit, an unchecked bit, we've checked it, okay, and we are ready to move on. So we've, we've, we've remembered the bit and we've checked it, and we're moving on now to step four, which says, you know, now go and verify that that bit is on the other side as well, on the other string. So move right until you pass the pound. Move right past pound to first unchecked bit. Okay, so you move right past pound to the first unchecked bit. What if there are no unchecked bits? So you'll keep moving right until you, and, and you'll hit blank. If there are no unchecked bits that you hit blank, that means there are more bits on this side than on that side you can reject. So <clears throat> if you hit blank, you can just immediately say no. In this case, there are more bits on the left than on the right. <clears throat> the other thing that can happen is you come to an unchecked bit. So in this situation, you will come, you'll move right, and you will come to an unchecked bit. So you will come to unchecked bit. Okay. So then what do you do? What you do is you, you, you remember, you remember the bit that you marked here. So verify that they match. <laughs> So verify, match, and mark, or check. So in this case, we verify that it matches and check it. If no match, so if this was a one, not a zero, then the strings don't match, so you say no. And so in, in either of these cases where you say no, you just stop. On the other hand, if you come to an unchecked bit, you verify the match and you check it, okay? In this situation, you've matched the first bits. So what do you do? Well, go back to base, go back to star, and repeat. So it will go back to star, and then it will come to step three, which says move right to the first unchecked bit. So it moves right to the first unchecked bit, it checks it, Remembers that it's zero, moves right. So now it goes to step four, which is to move right past the pound to the first unchecked bit. Verify that it matches what you remembered and then check it. So now we run step three and four again. Okay. And we go back to star. So we go back to star. And the DFA can do that because it can move left and right. Okay. Comes to step three again moves right to the first unchecked bit. So it moves right to the first unchecked bit, okay, checks it and remembers that it's one. Okay, then it comes to step four, move right past the pound, okay, move right past the pound to the first unchecked bit, verify that it matches what you remembered and mark it. Okay. Cool. And then if you implemented step four, go back to two, go back to star. Move right, move right, now you implement, you're at two, you go to step three, move right to the first unchecked bit. So you're moving right, moving right, moving right, moving right, moving right, no unchecked bits, boom! You get to pound. Okay. You get to pound. So here we said, we'll, we'll tell you what to do later in the algorithm, so go to step five. So now we must have a step five. Okay. And let's see what's happened here. What's happened here is, there are no more unchecked bits. So you've matched all the bits in the first string. So all you need to do is check that there are no more bits in the second string. Okay, so move right. Okay. If you come to an unmarked bit, if you get to an unmarked, unchecked bit, you immediately say no. Because that means there are more bits here. On the other hand, if you get to a blank symbol, 
as in this case, when you move right, when you move right, you will get to the blank symbol. You say yes. So in each of these cases, when you say no or yes, it's just exit. Okay. And in this example, this algorithm, okay, it zigzags. It starts. It goes. Boop, 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 boop. It goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. And eventually, it's going to say yes or no. Okay. Very interesting. And so this zigzagging behavior is typical of a Turing machine that solves a problem, any non-trivial problem. Okie dokie. So that's the high-level algorithm. Now, we're going to show you how we actually build this Turing machine. And then, you know, that'll be the, our only uh, experience with building a Turing machine. We'll move on. Okay. And most of the time, we'll, we'll be happy with these kinds of algorithm descriptions for... Uh, your Turing machines to solve various problems. We call this high level sort of um, pseudocode or just pseudocode of the Turing machine, showing you, you know, how it zigzags and solves the problem. Okay, so let's erase it. Let's build this Turing machine. Bam!